Okay, everybody, I think we're going to get started. Our comments to say hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to have you all here. I'm glad that you are interested in this ministry of docenting at Christ Church. As you know, it's important or you wouldn't be here. Um, do we know how many people visit Christ Church? In a year, do we tally that? We, we are going, going to start doing that We are going to again. start tallying that. All we know we is it's a lot, a lot of people uh, yeah. who come through this church and hopefully find it a place of hospitality and welcome. Uh, hopefully what we want is not only will they recognize a rich heritage and tradition that we're sharing the history about, but also that with our hospitality and our storytelling, we let them know that Christ Church is an active uh, congregation that's very much alive and doing things in the world. And I don't know how you do that if you do that already, but um, that's something to consider is how we do tell the story of Christ Church today at the same time that we have folks here. Um, I confess I have not been over yet to be docented uh, through Christ Church, and one day I will turn up and surprise somebody. Um, but it is wonderful to have you here, and I'm so grateful that you give your time and your energy to this. Um, people uh, are, are very appreciative that I've run into on the grounds of all the care they receive from our folks here. So thank you all very much, and thank you, Susan, for oh, stepping pleasure. into Malcolm's Void. That's um, big shoes to fill, I'm glad but to have I'm you. passionate about it, so we're going to have a good time. Great. Okay. Thank you again. All right. Why don't we start by going around and introducing ourselves, because some of us might not know each other, and uh, tell us a little bit about how long you've been a docent, or are you a returning docent, or are you a brand new docent? Let's start with you, Betty. I'm Betty Young. I've been a docent for 13 years. I do Saturdays and Sundays, and I at loose ends when I don't when there's a wedding or a funeral and I can't come because I really love this church and I love the um, doing this. Yeah. Well, we love you for doing the weekends. Thank you very much. <laughs> and usually the people ask if if we're a, if we're a, an active church, then you can launch into how active we are and tell them about the house tour and the cookbooks and everything. So that's always a good open. Hi, I'm Carol Ferguson. Um, I just recently retired, and I have not been a docent before, but I do have, uh, my degree is in history, and I specialized in Georgia history when I was teaching, so I love this church. I've loved it for many years. I've taught it for years and years, and, and I'm excited to be part of this. You're going to be a great asset. She's probably going to correct a lot of what we have today. <laughs> Eileen? I'm Eileen Hutchison, and I'm a return docent. I have docented for about 20 years prior to this, and then I decided I'd retire from that for a while. But now I see that I'm needed, we all need it, so I'm back and looking forward to it because it's a wonderful ministry. And the people are so interested about uh, what uh, the history of the church, the windows, everything. They're very, very interested, so thank you. Okay. Gail? I'm Gail Manning. I was a docent, I'm trying to remember how long ago, probably 15 or 20 years ago, but um, I had a business and my business partner retired and left me with 20 women and so at that point I had to give up the thing I really enjoyed doing the most. I loved doing this, I really did. Met the most interesting people, found out that Barbara Jean's has the best crab cakes in the world. <laughs> from, from Maryland to Miami, a man informed me. And it's always fun to have the children come in because you can tell them you can talk. You don't have to whisper, you don't have to be quiet when you're doing the church. And that's always fun for them too. It's just been a it was just a wonderful thing for me to, to do and take part of, and I have regretted not being able to do it since. But now I've recently retired also, <laughs> closed my business, and so now I'm able to do what I really enjoy, and I'm looking so forward to it. Yeah, We've been members here since we moved in the early 70s, and it's just such a part of our lives, and our children have grown up here, and, and we just all love this church. And, I'm just really looking forward to doing it again. We're so glad you're back. And uh, Gail tells me she wants to be a sub this year because she still has she has a teenager at home. So it's <laughs> wonderful to have somebody that can step in and sub. You must be Bill. Yes, I'm Bill. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I came over in early April and now uh, Malcolm with some guests. And Malcolm says you need to dose it tomorrow. So uh, <laughs> I got my training and started. So I've enjoyed it. But the big, the best thing I've enjoyed is the people that come in. 
I've had several Episcopal priests, Methodists, and they're always shocked to hear about the Wesleys, or they seem to be, our, our lineage to them. Uh, but the best ones, last week I had some people from Epworth, England, and we spent and talked for an hour, and uh, they told me all the things that uh, the Wesleys have done there. So, Wonderful. very good, but I enjoy it. But good. Short time, but I enjoy it. Oh, and he's, he's our mainstay, boy. He, he comes when called. We appreciate it. You must be Frankie. Yes, I am. I, I just, we're just introducing ourselves oh, okay. and a little um, bit about our ghost experience. Yeah, I'm Frankie Ansley, and what else did you... Uh, uh, how long have you been dosing? Just your oh, um, I've been dosing now almost two, I guess two years. Wonderful. So, yeah, okay. yeah, maybe a little over two years. Good. Well, yeah. We're glad I you're still you. with us. Okay, yeah. good. Fred? <coughs> You're just standing here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Everybody Griffith, and I, have, I don't have a clue why I'm here. Um, <laughs> I, uh, um, Betty and I came over on the Mayflower together. And, uh, I, I have been uh, doing, I've been a docent now for, I don't know, Betty, how long have been uh, Probably 12 years. 12, 13 years. Yeah. yeah. I guess so. So, um, anyway, I, uh, um, I'm glad we, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I think it's a tribute to Malcolm and to Betty for um, uh, this, you know, the, the transition of this organization has gone through some, some fair, fairly uh, uh, smooth uh, rides, I think, and, uh, and it's nice to see so many people here today, this morning. Yes, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's exciting. And, um, so I look forward to uh, doing my, my one day a month since we've got so many people here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> many hands make light work. That's right. Yeah. All right, Davey and Booty are going to talk to us later about the windows, but tell tell everybody who you are. You, they've been here a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that as a compliment. <laughs> well, I'm Davey Langston, and I've been we've been members of Christ Church since 1964. Uh, Booty, I was confirmed in 1960, and uh, we worked. Jay, Davey, and I worked on a project for Dr. Martin with the stained glass windows, so that's why we're here. They are responsible for this wonderful book on the windows that we refer to, and a little later on they're going to talk to us about uh, how that came to be and what they learned about the windows. Uh, Bonnie. Okay, I'm Bonnie Schumann, and I um, also recently retired, and I'm about to be an empty nester in another week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, um, anyway, I started last year, about a year and a half ago, when the ECW had the opportunity to start opening the church in the morning mm -hmm. for chores that were scheduled, I became, I offered to, to be a docent and usually served a couple of times a month on the morning duty uh, as scheduled. But the difference with that group is that they always have a tour guide. So there's a tour, there's a, someone here that really serves as our docent. So I've just been listening to them for the past year and a half or so and really just serving the purpose of opening the church, having the cookbooks available and the like. So I thought, I've learned a lot, but I'm still not comfortable to do the whole stuff myself. So I'm here to be trained so that I can be a resource because just like y'all have spoken to, it just feels so good to be able to share yes. what we're about and that whole bit that I, I'm hopeful that I can help some in the afternoon and, and get that same joy because it's, it's really a lot of fun. So. Nancy? I'm Nancy Zell, and I've been doing this maybe seven years. Betty uh, Young brought me into the group, taught me all I know, and uh, that's all I forgot, probably. But anyway, it's something I love to do, and I uh, really look forward to it and enjoy doing it a lot. Brent Taylor is a oh. sidekick of mine. And down at the Lighthouse, we do school tours together, and I'm just delighted he's here. Brent, tell us yeah. about yourself. Uh, I'm Brent Taylor. I'm here because Bill Ramser <laughs> told, told me to be here. <laughs> I've been doing tours at the Lighthouse for about 10 years, mostly with children, so this will be a different thing with adults. Mm -hmm. We'll have to be more serious and more accurate. <laughs> um, Not necessarily. And, Not necessarily. <laughs> as long as you preface it with legend has it, yeah. right, then you're okay. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, that's and, and I'm here because um, because Chris and I, my wife, are uh, thinking about going back to St. Ignatius. We've been in St. Mark's for a number of years. And, um, and now we're thinking about coming back because it's just closer and easier to work with. And, and uh, we like the environment back on the island again. So 
Yay. So I'm, Yay. I'm attaching all of this together as one, you know, mega piece right. and thinking that why don't I just learn about Christ Church? Christ Excellent. Church. Well, we're glad you're here. Ed and Lynn Turner. Ed Turner, uh, I'm one of those that couldn't tell Malcolm no. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, he just kept on and on and on. And, and, uh, but I'm glad that I started doing it. Uh, uh, we do it together. Uh, Lynn is the Eugenia Price tour guide, and I'm in here. Uh, uh, she will take them out there and, uh, and all. But uh, I, I really enjoyed getting to know the people that come and visit from all, up, as y'all know, from all over the world. And uh, it is amazing uh, how good it feels to share our church with others but how much they enjoy coming and seeing the church and hearing about the church. And, and uh, it really makes you feel good uh, in doing it. Lynn? Well, um, I'm Lynn, and I couldn't tell Ed no, so I came with him. <laughs> <laughs> did it with him after I retired. He talked about it for the year before I retired and said it was you know, something he enjoyed doing. And I thought, OK, I can do that, and I'll come with him and do it. And so it's been, it has been fun. I have enjoyed it. Great. And the Johnsons. I'm Bob Johnson. This is my wife, Gail. We uh, have been visitors here since Tom Fitzgerald was rector in 1989, but we only became full-time residents one year ago, and we transferred our letter from uh, St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Atlanta, and Gail was doing flowers one day, and I think it left the door open, and we had a tour. <laughs> <laughs> so we became to a docent right quick. But uh, I did it just because it is fun, as you said. And meet a lot of interesting people, a lot of funny stories. And one of my favorites is one of the tour guides was referring to the stained glass window in the back of General Oglethorpe and Tomachichi and said, this is the Indian that he took back to England, Thomas Chichi. <laughs> and another, another myth, the, the red rosettes in the stained glass window back here, one of the tour guides said, now that's the most valuable one because those are genuine rubies. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. <laughs> cut those that Father Stephen McCord told me. <laughs> But things like that keep me coming back, and uh, I'm a veteran because I've done it three times now. <laughs> and they're always interested in where the president sat when they visited. But things like that make it fun. I have to confess that it fell to me to gently explain to Father Stephen that those were not rubies. <laughs> I think he was very disappointed. I should say. Well, I'm Gail Johnson, and I do do flowers and altar here, and love it, and uh, we feel very welcome at Christ Church, and I think the way to feel welcome is pitch right in and meet people and do things. So. Um, Bob and I go work together so that if I'm busy, he could come by himself. Yeah. Excellent. That's great. And Art. <clears throat> I'm Art Pearson. Uh, I've been a docent for a little bit less than a year. I think uh, uh, Malcolm uh, recruited me. <laughs> and I mean, I'm enjoying it. Um, I've been a member of this church with my wife for uh, a little over 10 years. Before that, we were members of Christ Church in Andover, Massachusetts. When I'm a docent here, one of the, some of the times the question is, is this an active parish? Some people seem to think it's a museum. Yes, they do. And they do. No, it's not. And then another one I'm, I'm asked is, what's the difference between us and the Roman Catholics? And I give them a little history of Henry VIII. <laughs> The other thing is, what are you anything like the Methodists? And Father Tom, I tell him, Methodists and us are sort of like first cousins. <laughs> you can correct me if you want. We're the ancestors. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. And I don't know a 
as much about the windows as I would like. And you did, I just didn't realize there was a book about the windows well, over yeah. here. And all no, I know, you know about the windows is what I find in the cookbooks. Mm -hmm. And until recently, I thought this Roman soldier over here was about ready to take off that poor beggar's oh, head. Well. <laughs> but, no. uh, but that's not the case at all. No, <laughs> no. The children always want to know about that story. So no. <laughs> okay. Well, this is great. Thank you all so much for being here. And I love, love your enthusiasm. Uh, what we're going to do today is uh, kind of take you through the docent manual in what I hope will be a fun way, uh, fun way of doing it. And uh, Davy and Booty are going to talk to us about the windows, and Betty's going to talk to us about housekeeping details. Now, for those of you that are new and returning, all these materials are going to be found in the little mini sacristy back here. Uh, everything is there that you need. Um, I tried to design the manual so that you'd have everything in one place. And those of you that are new and have your little packets, you've got the inside pages to this and the current docents already have that too. Um, you'll find um, the index and engaging with your visitors. And then you'll find docent check-in and check-out procedures. Betty's going to talk about that in a little while. Everything you need will be in this book back there on top of the metal cabinet. You can sign in for the calendar, um, the tally sheet that you need to keep. Everything will be right there. Um, you'll find information on the building, the church building, and you'll find information on the history of the building. And then as I find interesting articles, just for interesting reading, they'll be behind in general information. And one thing that I really want to uh, encourage you to remember, it tucked in the back are walking tours of the cemetery. You'll have a lot of people come in and say, do you have a, a tour of the cemetery? And you can give them this. It has the map and it has a write-up tucked in there. And just ask them to bring it back to you so we don't run out. And you will have people who come specifically to find out where Eugenia is buried. And we have a nice map with a yellow route to her grave, so that's tucked in the back, too. Was she a member of this church? Ever? She was never a member of this church, no. Uh, but um, her book, Beloved Invader, has brought a lot of visitors to our church. But she never gave us any money. <laughs> Um, also back there will be your Windows book that uh, uh, Davy and Booty are going to talk about, and our big cookbook book that Betty Young will be telling you about. Everything's back there that you need, and um, Glenn has just brought over new uh, envelopes for the money. These are all pretty self-explanatory, and they're in your instructions, and Betty will talk to you a little bit about that. So what I would like to do is start out and first talk to you a little bit about engaging with your visitors. The most important thing that you can do while you're in here in an afternoon is be friendly and welcoming. Let them know that you're happy they're, you're happy they're here. Um, offer to ask, answer any questions they might have about the church. Uh, you're an ambassador for the church. And yes, most of the folks come from out of town, but a lot come who live here locally and uh, we'll bring family or friends in. And it's just, we're right on the front lines for Christ Church. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity uh, for us to engage and be welcoming and be friendly. Um, a quick note about the ropes. We, I have this open right now. When you're in here dosing, we like you to keep both these ropes uh, closed. And we're not trying to be unfriendly at all. It's just simply that we have to re remember that this is a church. It is a house of worship. We have to respect the altar area. And most people understand that. You know, most, I, I really never had anybody argue with me about it. Uh, a second uh, reason is that we've been given stewardship of some pretty precious stuff. Uh, the baptismal font is from Anson Dodge's Sunday school class in Connecticut, and the bust of Anson as a child was brought over on the occasion of his death in 1898. They both predate the church. Uh, these beautiful hangings up here were done by Marguerite Chisholm. She was a member of the church. She uh, started them at the age of 
76 and finished at the age of 93. She had done a lot of needlepoint for the National Cathedral in Washington. And while she was doing that, she taught the ladies of the church how to do the kneelers. So this is all special, pretty precious stuff that we need, that we have stewardship of, and we need to take care of. And if you lose track of people and they're milling all around, and that could happen on a busy day, it's, it's not a good idea. Um, and that doesn't mean we're being unfriendly, it just means we're being good stewards and, and respecting um, the church. Uh, you're going to find, and some of you have already alluded to this, all people come in with all kinds of different expectations. Uh, occasionally somebody will just come in and kneel down and say a prayer and sit quietly. And you need to respect that, you know. It's wonderful. I had a lady the other day and I thought, wow, somebody actually takes time out to go to church and, take, and say a prayer. That was wonderful. Uh, others uh, will come in and uh, kind of wander around and look and come up to the front and you offer to share any information you might with them and you'll get into kind of a conversation with them. They may have some specific questions that they want answered. And others will come right up and say, what can you tell us about the church? And that's kind of your clue that they want the full presentation, soup to nuts. And as you do this, you're going to become more instinctive about it. Uh, I just try to listen to people and respond and uh, not accost them with the full thing uh, every time if that's not what they want. Uh, most of us, I think, sit up here in the choir loft. Uh, it's a great place to be. You can stand up and see them come in the door and greet people and say hello. Certainly, uh, a, you can move out and move around the church if you're talking about the windows, for example. Uh, a lot of people get very, very interested in the windows, and it's nice to be able to go back and uh, point things out. Um, Always remember to offer them a cookbook. I should shame on me. I don't have one in here. <laughs> but uh, it, it's kind of a nice way to end uh, whatever you're doing uh, after you've given them history and days gone by and, and brought them up to date about our wonderful active parish that we have right now. And then uh, you can offer them the cookbook and, and tell them uh, all the wonderful uh, things that are done as a result of the proceeds from the sale of that cookbook. Um, if, and I've mentioned, if a visitor expresses interest in the cemetery, you can offer them um, the walking guide. <laughs> Bathrooms. Uh, if someone needs to use a bathroom, you may send them to the parish house. I have this straight from Glenn Queener, and he says that's fine. Uh, if you have uh, an emergency, an older person or a child, uh, you can take them to the wind building. Um, Fred, am I right that most of the big tour buses have bathrooms on board? Yeah, they do. And, and uh, the, the unfortunate thing in all the history of my being a, a guide on motor coaches is that a, a lot of the drivers discourage the people from using them unless they're mm -hmm. a, a, an emergency. Yeah. Because they have to find, there's not a lot of motor coach friendly places to dump mm -hmm. their, their, mm -hmm. uh, uh, their, those facilities on their coaches. So um, it, it uh, in the course of a two-hour tour or an hour and a half tour of course I as a guy try to encourage we plan it from one bathroom yes. to the other yeah. right? <laughs> and and so um, uh, I have always discouraged people from going back into the wind building and uh, 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 but I think it's great that the if the parish house is open um, then that's yeah. that's wonderful but but you know the coach, you don't have to acquiesce to the coach's request. I mean, yeah. you can just say, I'm sorry, no, we, you know, we don't. And, I, and it's always work. I mean, they, yeah, I mean, right, right. Because yeah. the one thing we don't want to have That's what I tell them the Wesley Trail's over there for. You're <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, Well, the one thing we want to avoid is 35 people all yeah. making a rush for, for one of our little bathrooms. <laughs> and it's always Fort Greg Rico. Yeah, but yeah, I think, that's what I call them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They have multiple bathrooms. Yeah, but yeah they just, do. But, but the problem with Fort Frederica is, um, and this is, I'm sorry, I, uh, I don't mean to no, no, that's, parade or anything yeah. here, but, but the, the National Park Service will not let motor coaches stop and go to the bathroom without charging us a $200 fee. Oh, oh wow. And 
Yes, that's been going on forever. Yeah. And I have fought them and fought them and fought them. And the only time that uh, the only time there's no fee is when it's a children's tour, okay. and that has to be arranged weeks in advance with Fort Frederica. It's a national park policy. It's yeah. not a Fort Frederica policy, uh -huh. and uh, it is unfortunate. However, if you get individuals in here yes, that, yes, that yeah. have a need, then that the Fort Frederica is certainly an out for right. you if, right. if the parish uh, okay. uh, hall is not open. So okay. um, that that's, uh, that's, that's just, you know. Well, that's a problem on weekends because the parish hall is closed. Yeah. Yeah. And you just have to, if somebody's got a child, that, yeah. <laughs> you know that you need to help that person. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Let's move on um, to information on the building. Um, there should, you, those of you that are new should have a little handout on that. Um, the church building was completed in 1884. Construction started in 1882. And it was completed in 1884, and I believe it was consecrated in 1886. It's all natural heart pine. It's the very best part of the pine tree. It's rich in rosin. Termites don't like it, which is lucky for us. But fire loves it, so we don't have candlelight services in here, <laughs> unfortunately. If we were to light a match, it would just go right up. Um, it, the roof is a trust Gothic style. It's a cantilever system. The beams are supporting one another. I had a fellow in here one day that worked in wood, and he said that we had double queen post trusses and intricate joints called birth bird mouth joints. And if you look right here above the pulpit, you see that thing that looks a little like a bird mouth? Mm -hmm. It's also called a goose joint. Goose, a, goose mouth. A goose mouth, a goose mouth, or a bird mouth. Okay, very good. Uh, this wood has never been painted or stained. You're li looking at the natural aging patina of the wood. It is all wood pegged, and people always say, what? And if you can look up and find, you can see little round circles in between where the beams meet, and that's where the pegs were run through. There are a few nails around the windows to help hold them in. Uh, the architect was G.W. Lane from Atlanta. He also designed St. James at, Ed, at Epworth, which is now known as Lovely Lane Chapel. Um, this church is dedicated to the memory of Ellen Dodge, of course, the wife of Anson Green Phelps Dodge. When you look up into the rafters, you sort of look like you're looking up into the upside down hull of a ship. And that is because Anson hired shipwrights who were working on Gascombe Bluff to build this church. He had the architectural drawing from Mr. Lane, but the real secret is the people that came over and actually did this work. Uh, their, their handwork is just amazing. And you get people, you're going to get people in here that work in wood, and they're, they're going to be just blown away by it. And we'll share a lot uh, with you about that aspect of the, of the building. Um, what else do I want to tell you? OK, a lot of you have asked me, how in the world did they expand this church? The original church in 1884 went as far about where the, the door is that we come in today. And in 1933, it was expanded back. And I'm going with that date. I found it, the, where I have gotten all this information, I sifted through a pile of stuff that was stuffed in the old docent manual in the back. And where I got agreement on, on things, I went with that. And I found 1933 in two or three places. Booty tells me Royce was born in 34. And he remembers as a young child sitting in the back of the church when the windows were still clear glass. And she'll, she'll tell you more about that. How in the world they did this seamless expansion, I don't know. Uh, you know, we, I haven't found anybody that can answer that question. It just, it just seems <coughs> unbelievable when you look. It, it all is so continuous, you just wonder how on earth they accomplished it. Uh, if I unearth anything at all that gets us, can shine more light on that, I will. Uh, but it was expanded in 1933, uh, and Booty and Davey will tell you about the windows that were added after that time later on. Um, there were some funny stories. Zoe Ann Covington uh, was 
a child at the time when there was still clear glass and there was no wind building. And um, Father Matthew's grave site was just outside the church at that time. And his is the one that has the, the tabletop, like an altar table. And for some reason, in the mind of a child, when the priest was talking about Pontius Pilate, Zoan thought he was buried out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got her to tell you that story. And Booty, tell us about the ghost. Oh, well, the, the bus of um, Anson Dodge was in its place there, but when the, the windows were clear, you could come up to Christ Church at night, park, there, there was no lich gate, I don't think, at that time. There, and I don't think there was a wall. This is back in the 50s, late 40s. Yeah. And um, park your car in such a way that the car lights shone on the church and bring somebody from Atlanta around to the back side where there were also clear glass windows. There were windows back on that part too, those last two of these. And um, when you stood there at the window, Anderson Dodge's head was what you saw. And you know, that was the ghost in the church. And that was funny too. I was doing that. church worked into our altar. You'll notice the choir pews are smaller than the ones you're sitting in and have a little cross cut out and there are a couple more back in the nave. They were saved from the 1820 church. And the four-legged base to the credence table. That was all, that's all we have from the 1820 church in this building. Another interesting thing, Christ Church Savannah originally loaned the communion rail, the two clergy chairs, and the pulpits to us for 10 years, but we still have them. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we worked out an arrangement. Um, some of you may wonder, there used to be a very large old Bible resting on the lectern here. That, was a that, that is a 1781 Bible from England that was given by a parishioner in the late 1900s. Uh, and after I originally said it was there, I came into Docent one day and I said, where's the Bible? It's gone. And they uh, put it away uh, back in the priest's room on the bottom shelf. It was kind of big and bulky and that much more for the readers to deal with when they, they read their lessons. But it's kind of sad it's gone. I, mm -hmm. I've gotten to enjoy it there. I mentioned the baptismal font and the bust. Uh, the organ is an Allen digital organ. You will have uh, choir directors and musicians come in and they'll want to know about the organ. And they're very fascinated to, to have you point out uh, the speakers over each window in the transept and the big one up here and the one uh, above the window in the back. And, and you can tell them we have a wonderful organist and she gets a lot out of that little organ. She sure <laughs> does. <laughs> it does. Um, and I've told you about the needlepoint hangings up here. Now, uh, Booty mentioned the Lich Gate. That actually wasn't constructed until 1956, and it was made possible by Ruth Reed Robbins, who was a faithful parishioner at the time. Lich is a Scottish word which means corpse. And um, back in the days in Scotland, it was used at times of funerals. Uh, the funeral procession would come to the church, and they would Put, lay out staves in the lich gate and rest uh, the um, coffin there until the clergy arrived. And probably rest themselves a little bit too. And then the clergy would arrive and you would process in from the lich gate. So it's another wonderful old uh, traditional piece. The nice thing is today we put two greeters there on Sunday morning to say, welcome, come in. <laughs> so we use it for a little more cheerful purposes. Uh, Father Reniger used it to greet the members of the family when he was doing a service. Yeah. Which was very, very friendly, of very nice to walk in to the church with him. That is a nice idea. Yeah. yeah. We should mention that to Father Tom. <laughs> okay. Um, Betty and Davy, why don't you come on up and talk about the windows a little bit at this point, and then we'll talk about the windows.